I like it when my nuts are salty. What do you think I was talking about? <laughs> Greetings one and all, and welcome back to Tom's Hit Parade. I know you all have been waiting on pins and needles with bated breath, as it were, for me to finally get back to some form of album reviews on my channel. Yes, as I mentioned in my uh, interview video last week, it's been uh, a kind of a crazy year. I've had trouble keeping up with uh, the new release calendar, uh, with listening to new releases, and most of all with being able to organize my thoughts in enough of a form to give you some sort of uh, video reviews of newer albums. Uh, yeah, they've been few and far between this year, but finally your patience I hope it's been patience, is finally being rewarded. I am coming at you with a new Now and Then video, hopefully to this week, actually. Uh, so, yeah, your patience is even being even more rewarded. But uh, anyway, yes, Now and Then is my feature in which I talk about two albums by the same artist, their newest release as well as one from their back catalog. And the subject of today's Now and Then is UK rock band Keen. And for now, we'll be talking about their newest album, Cause and Effect. It is their fifth album and their first album in seven years. Now, I've been aware of Keen since pretty much their beginning, uh, but I didn't really get into them until their third album, Perfect Symmetry, where they departed from their standard piano rock type of stuff, and they turned synth on us. They kind of went 80s, new wave sort of uh, feel, and uh, th that really caught my ear. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Their, their uh, single from that album, Spiraling, really caught my ear. It reminded me of the Human League from ba way back in the 80s. But anyway, I digress. Um, I enjoyed the album after that, Strange Land, uh, from 2012, quite a bit, and uh, I, I've actually been thinking about doing an Albums of 2012 video just because that year is important to me uh, in a personal sense, and uh, uh, naturally that I'm so much into music, uh, some of the albums from that year took on a real personal meaning to me, so I've been thinking about doing that video. I probably will at some point, but uh, so I will probably get into Strange Land in uh, more detail later on. But anyway, uh, yes, I actually was not going to give this album a try, uh, since, you know, the longer that a band is on hiatus, uh, more often than on anyway, uh, the harder, harder it is for them to come back with something that's truly great, and more importantly, something that meets fans' expectations. You know, the longer they go without an album, usually the higher the fans' expectations are going to get, uh, especially the hardcore fans. And I do have to admit, while this album didn't totally wow me, it didn't exactly disappoint me either. Uh, it, uh, it's grown on me over repeated listens. I've listened to it seven or eight times now. And while Keen have not gone all the way back to their piano rock beginnings with this album, uh, this is about as far as they have gone uh, ever since you know Perfect Symmetry came out, basically. Uh, this album seems to strike a really good balance between the piano rock leanings of early Keen and their more synth uh, leanings of their more recent albums. Uh, the opening track, uh, You're Not Home, it starts very quietly with a piano, or I think in this case it's actually a synthesized piano beginning, and slowly builds over its five and a half minutes. And uh, the closing track, I Need Your Love, is a very hushed, subdued ballad. Uh, neither of these are the best songs on the album, but they're perfect choices for opening and closing tracks. Uh, that, that gives you an idea of the, the, the uh, track sequencing on this album is, is really good. And uh, yeah, that first track, You're Not Home, it builds and builds up to a uh, perfect point where it kicks off the rest of the album, uh, leading into the first two singles, Love Too Much, which is track two. And that's a mid-tempo track uh, with a very good melody in which the protagonist admits that he may have overstepped in his actions, but only out of love, and uh, he feels he can't apologize for them. Uh, that's basically the, the, the story behind the lyrics on that track. And uh, the other single, which actually I think was the first single, uh, Love, Me, Love Too Much was the second single, the first single off the album, The Way I Feel, is track three on here. Uh, and that's a more of an upbeat song, and it's about, it talks about our negative emotions and how when they come to the surface, we're, we're told by society that they're wrong and something's wrong with us, and we're conditioned by society to believe that. Uh, and so that, that's a very good message. It's one that I can kind of relate to in some ways. <laughs> and uh, But both songs have nice little uh, synth touches, like, you know, as is of uh, typical of uh, more recent Keen. So yeah, those are two, uh, two very, very good tracks on this album. Then we have a song called Phases, which is a, just kind of an epic-sounding song. It brings to mind early Keen. 
and it's basically about perseverance. Uh, you know, life is a series of ups and downs, and it almost never turns out as we planned, but we have to do the best we can till we get to the top of the next hill, so to speak. And uh, then there's a song called Stupid Things, which has a great melody, but it's contrasted with lyrics that document the various excuses that the protagonist has and reasons uh, for neglecting his relationship. And then we have a song called Put the Radio On, which, uh, whose title might make it sound like it's an uplifting, feel-good anthem sort of thing, but it's actually about a, a couple who escape their problems, and who knows the nature of them. It, the lyrics are kind of vague on the nature of those problems, uh, but they you know, escape their problems by turning on the radio and losing them, themselves in music, which is something that I can really relate to. I'm sure a lot of you can as well. So yeah, that's uh, kind of a, one of the, again, one of the more subdued numbers on the album. And uh, the only other notably uplifting song is near the end of the album. It's called Chase the Night Away. And it's one of those anthemic love songs. Uh, it may not be the most lyrically original song, but it's kind of a welcome ray of sunshine in an otherwise mostly subdued album. Now, as you can see here, I've called out eight of the 11 tracks on the album, so there's hardly a track on here that doesn't serve some kind of a purpose. Uh, and all of them seem to have something sonically unique, if only to that album rather than to music in general, or to Keen in, in general. Uh, is it my favorite Keen album? No. Uh, was it worth the wait? Mm, I'm not sure, but it's still growing on me, and in my opinion, it's a worthy addition to the Keen catalog. I am glad I picked it up, definitely. But that was now, and this is then, Under the Iron Sea, Keen's sophomore album from 2006. Now, as is usual with my Now and Then videos, I try to pick the album from the artist's catalog that left the least impression on me, or that I remember the least, uh, for the Then portion. And this was Keen's album uh, in that respect. Although now that I've listened to it again, I honestly don't know why it didn't leave more of an impression on me. Well, I guess in a way I do, uh, because Keen is really good at couching downer lyrics, so to speak, in appealing melodies, and it was probably the downer lyrics that uh, kept my 13 years younger self from really appreciating the album back then, until now. Now, the album starts out ordinarily enough with the song Atlantic, uh, which was typical, at least for Keane's debut album, a typical piano-based, kind of a sprawling, epic-sounding sort, sort of a song. Uh, but track two is pretty much the game-changer, uh, Is It Any Wonder? It kicks in right away with slicing, echoey guitars and big drums, right out of the U2 playbook. At least I don't recall uh, Keen having done something like that on their debut album. I'll have to go back and listen to it again. Uh, but it's just like one of those awesome arena-ready anthems that was just not typical, as I said, of Keen at the time. Uh, now, moving on, the title of track three, Nothing In My Way, that makes it uh, seem like it might be an optimistic song. But again, this is what Keen does, or, or did back then. It's about the protagonist's love interest who has a habit of suppressing her depression, doubts, fears, in front of her significant other. And so that gives it a, a bit of a darker tone. And there are a couple of standout tracks for, from this album, for me anyway. Uh, a Bad Dream is one of those. I, I'm still trying to figure out the lyrics, honestly. They, they can take on a few different meanings, but just the aching beauty of this ballad just totally haunts me, and I, I can't believe I almost forgot about it uh, um, when I put this album back on uh, recently. And another one of the standouts, one of my, probably my favorite track on the album, is Crystal Ball. Uh, and that is actually one of the most up-tempo tracks on the album, uh, which is one of, one of the reasons why it's my favorites. But uh, again, the lyrics have this kind of a dark pallor to them. Uh, it's, it's, as I said, something that Keen does well. Uh, Broken Toy is another great track on here. Uh, the Time Signature is uh, one that I don't recall hearing on any other Keen song. And uh, the, the lyrics are basically about how not realizing how old you are or how much time has passed until we stop and look around. And it's a, a great message, kind of a universal message in that song. And then uh, the closing track, The Frog Prince, is another one that I love. It's kind, of a, it's kind of a commentary on how power or other forms of influence can change a person for the worse. Uh, so yeah, just a lot of great songs on here. And uh, in retrospect, this is a much better album than I remember it being. And then that's actually one of the things that I love about this Now and Then segment is it gets me to listen to albums that I've left sitting on the shelf for far too long. So uh, anyway, in terms of the two albums together, side by side, which one is better? I'd have to say Under the Iron Sea, uh, definitely. I I'm so glad I came back to this. Uh, it's one of the reasons I'm really glad that I came up, came up with this Now and Then thing, as I said. I just love it. It's just lush melodies, well-crafted lyrics. Uh, perhaps Keen's strongest album in that respect. 
Uh, but as I said, uh, cause and effect is still growing on me after half a dozen, seven, eight listens, uh, though I I certainly don't see it uh, proving itself to be as solid an entry in the Keen catalog as Under the Iron Sea is, but uh, you know, we'll have to see in a couple months from now where this one ranks in my uh, end of year favorites. So I hope you enjoyed this look at Keen now and then, and that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Suggestions, questions, constructive criticisms, lay them on me in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter feed and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.